a simple thought, a quick thought, an encouraging thought entitled, Don't Keep It to Yourself. Don't, don't keep it to yourself. Listen, hear me, hear me well. Underline it in the recesses of your mental smart board. You and I, we need each other. At some point, you don't believe me, you'll, you'll come to, to find out that life's, life's challenges will become so complex. Life's problems will become so profound. Life's issues will become so insati insatiable that, that we, we, we find ourselves in need of assistance from someone else. I mean, every, every now and then we find ourselves in situations, we find ourselves in, in circumstances that we are not gifted uh, to conquer in challenges that, that our strengths are no match for. We find ourselves dealing uh, with issues that we are not equipped to handle on our own. And it's, it's in those moments that we need the giftedness of someone else because God has gifted us. God has, has gifted each and every one of us with strengths and abilities to complement, not necessarily complete, but complement one another. And this really appears to be the main idea that Peter is sharing with the troubled Christians in, in this particular passage this morning. Listen, while, uh, while pushing them to, to keep on keeping on in the face of persecution, and while encouraging them to lean on one another, and while encouraging them to not uh, give up or to give in, Peter pauses to remind them that every child of God, every every recipient of God's love, every person who possesses the grace and of the mercy of God has been blessed with an individual gift and an individual responsibility to share that gift in the ministry and the benefit of others. Uh, if they were going to, Paul and Peter rather is, is bothering to make this point because he wanted it to be clear and undeniable in their minds that if they were going to survive and if they were going to thrive individually, they must serve each other and share their gifts collectively. Listen, let me help somebody in here understand that if you are ever going to get where you're trying to go, it's going to be because somebody came alongside and helps you. If, 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 if you. if you are going to be successful in any particular area of your life, it's going to be, praise the Lord, because at some point somebody opened a door or somebody picked you up and helped you get where you're going. Am I talking to anybody in here who understands that every now and again you're going to need the help of somebody else? I'll even take it a step further. Ain't nobody going to get to get to heaven on their own. Ain't Every now and again, you're going to need somebody to come along and encourage you. Every now and again, you're going to need somebody to come along and talk some sense into you. Every now and again, you're going to need somebody to come along and show you what you cannot see and tell you what you don't want to hear. Everybody is going to need somebody. And to that, Peter tells them they, they should be motivated to serve, to to, to, to minister uh, with a limitless kind of love. Listen, quoting Proverbs chapter 10, verse number 12, uh, in verse number 8 of our text, uh, Peter says, above all, keep fervent in your love for one another. He says, because love covers a multitude of sin. Now listen, I'm not going to take the time to get into all of that, but I do need you to understand here uh, that the, 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 the simple, again, overarching idea that Peter is trying to help the church there understand is that love ought to be the motivation. Love ought to be the fuel. Love ought to be the, the domineering influence behind everything that we do. Listen, it's worth pointing out uh, that the Greek term there uh, for, for, for fervent, and some translations uh, use the term deeply, uh, but I need you to understand that the Greek term there for fervently, uh, it, was, it was used to describe a runner uh, that was stretching and straining his muscles as he approached the finish line. 
Listen, if you if you watch if you watch uh, track and field much, you understand. You know that unless unless a runner, I uh, praise the Lord, is just it's just blowing folk out like Usain Bolt used to. Uh, when when runners get close to the finish line, they don't ease up. They don't loosen up as as runners get close to the finish line to make sure they they complete their race and their run uh, in the best time and in the best condition to make sure they give their, their best effort. They stretch and they stray. They put on their ugly face. Come on, don't talk back to me. They, they put on their ugly face. Say amen if you can. As they get close to the finish line, they stretch and and they strain. And that that's the image. That's the picture. A praise the Lord that Peter uses and, and conjures up in our mind as he talks about how you and I must love one another. He says that we must stretch and that we must strain like a runner about to cross the finish line. And listen, in case you missed it, uh, the simple idea here is that loving folk and serving people and, and ministering to others is, a, is not effortless and it dang sure ain't easy. Say amen if you can. Uh, the truth is, some folk make it hard. Sister Thomas, you know where I'm going with this. You, you've been around long enough to know that some folk make it hard. Love. In fact, some folk, some folk make it so hard to love them that you got to put on your ugly face. Amen, if you can. Uh, to, to love them. You gotta, so some folk make you stretch and strain, shall we? Praise the Lord. In order to minister to them. I'm, talk, I'm, talking, I'm talking about the folk, praise the Lord, at homecoming. When you, when you, you make that plate and you, and you bring it to the table, they complain because it ain't the right piece of chicken on there. You, you understand what I'm saying? The folk, the folk that, 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 that act like thank you and please is, is not in their vocabulary. I'm talking about the folk that never returned a favor. I'm talking about the folk that always got their hand out but never willing to offer a hand up. Some folk make it hard. I'm talking about the folk that got nasty, ugly, ugly spirits and things. And you got to pray before you talk to them because you know it's going to be a test of your faith. And some folk make it hard for you to love them. Some folk refuse to, to allow you a moment's peace. It's hard to love folk. It's hard to minister to folk. It's hard to treat people sometimes the way the Lord demands, the way the Lord requires. And the truth is sometimes you got to put on your ugly face in your spirit and you got to strain to love some people. But Peter is suggesting here that love is what enables ministry to flow through you even when they mistreat you. Don't miss that because somebody needs to hear what I'm saying because there's somebody that's going to work tomorrow morning and you're going to need to remember. Y'all ain't talking back to me. You're going to need to remember that it is love flowing through you that allows you to treat people with kindness that mistreats you. Come on, I'm talking to somebody that's about to go home, and you got, and you got, and before you get to the house, you're gonna have to circle the block one more time. Oh, y'all don't want it this morning. You're gonna have to circle the block one more time and say, Lord, come on, somebody, your love will enable me. To have love flow through me, even though they are mistreating me. Come on. I'm, I'm talking to somebody come, come Thanksgiving, you don't disobey the judge's orders and you don't go to the cookout and to the Thanksgiving dinner. But before you get in the house, you're going to have to remember, Lord, it's your love. Flowing yeah. through me, that's going to let me go up in here and not turn the family cookout. Oh, yeah, okay, all right, all right. Peter, Peter, Peter says love allows you to let go of the pain. But Peter said it, love, it frees you of the frustration that keeps you from serving and being the, 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 the ministry gift that God has crafted you and formulated you to be. He's saying love, love keeps you 
from not only holding their wrongs against them, but it also, love is also what keeps you from withholding ministry and love from them. Peter goes on, on says to that, says, while we are, we are gifted, gotta hurry on, by the, by the grace of God. He says, while we are in fact gifted by the grace of God, the grace of God is manifested in different gifts. In other words, the source of all of our gifts is the same. And that is the grace of God. But that grace shows up and manifests itself in different gifts. It's right there. Peter said it like this. He says in verse number 10, as each one has received a special gift, he says, employ it. In other words, in other words, Peter, Peter is saying that through God's grace, God made you clear. He says, God made you uniquely you. He says, you have received a special gift. God made you uniquely you. There is no one exactly like you, and no one can do what you do like you do what you do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on, y'all used that line before. Yes, sir. We ain't going to go there and say amen, but you know what I'm saying? You used that line, baby, can't nobody. <laughs> oh, okay. I, oh, I, I, I thought the church was going to show up this morning. Uh, 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 God <laughs> has made you uniquely you. There's no one exactly like you, and there's nobody that can do what you do the way you do it. But watch this. The preaching point is that just like God has gifted, uh, uh, and the, rather that, that, that just like you have gifts that I lack, watch this now, I have gifts that you lack. And since, watch this, this is the big, this is the big idea. And since we're facing the same challenges and striving for the same goal, we all need each other. This, 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 let me put it a different way. If we're all trying to get to heaven, it seems like we ought to help each other get there. Mm -hmm. if, we, if we're all trying to make heaven our home, and I got some stuff you need, and you got some stuff I need. Seem like we ought to help each other. I'll say amen if you can. Uh, if, if, if I'm trying to, to make something positive out of my life, and you trying to make something positive out of your life, ain't no point in us hating on each other. Come on, all right. Now listen, y'all gonna make me get rid. The, 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 listen, part of what we'll put this on my heart, Sister Thomas. Is that this past week we so we we heard of a we saw a man get shot in broad daylight on the freeway. Now, you know, we can all agree, maybe, maybe everybody doesn't do things the way we, we, we think they ought to do them. But the reality is everybody's trying to make something of themselves. If you got any kind of sense about you. You ought to be trying to make something of yourself. Yes, and the point is, if we're all trying to make something of ourselves, what's, what's the point in me hating on you? If we can work together, come on, somebody, let me leave you hanging now. And get there together. If, 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 if we could be judgment day honest, that same mentality needs to be more prevalent in the church, not just the street. Because yeah. the reality is you've got some Christians that are the biggest haters. Yeah. Oh, come yeah. on. Come on. You, 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 you've got more haters? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh? In the church sometimes you do the street. Yeah. That's right. And, so, and Peter, again, the, 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 the idea here and don't get me wrong, we, we're all, this is a hospital. We're all trying to get better. 
All right, so don't don't take that out of context, all because you got some people that that want to that that, that want to hate on the church because the church ain't full of perfect people. Okay, well, guess what? If the church is perfect, if you can't stop being okay. Anyway, but the point that Peter is making is: listen, we're all living under persecution. So if there's one place where where there ought to be some peace. If there's, we, we got enough enemies coming after us out there. If there's one place where we as a people, come on somebody, if there's one place where me, we as a family, we as a body ought to be able to work together, it's in the fellowship of the people of God. And so he's, he's helping us understand, them understanding by extension us, that we need, you got what I need, I got what you need. We all trying to go to the same place. Let's work together. But Peter says something else in verse number 10. And about three. He says, even so minister the same one to another. Let me back up. Sorry, sorry. The verse over. He says, as each one has received a special gift, that's the the, uni the, uh, the, 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 the the unique gift. He says, employ it, even so minister the same one to another. Watch this. As good stewards of the manifold grace of God. In other words, in other words, your gift. Whatever it is, was received and not achieved. Come on. Come on. Whatever it is that God gifted you to do, whatever it is that, that makes you unique, whatever it is about you that nobody can duplicate, it was received and not achieved. Oh, you didn't get, in other words, you didn't earn it. You didn't work for it. And, it's, it, and it, it, it was not owed to you. By grace, it was entrusted to you as a steward of God and for God's use. And with the grace you were to share your gift as a good steward. Don't miss that. By grace. You received it by grace. And it is by grace that you are to share it. It was entrusted to you, not because it was owed to you or you earned it. It was simply based on the grace of Almighty God. And what Peter is, is saying here, is as 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 good as as God was in gifting you. How dare you become arrogant? That's the underlying thing. How dare you be arrogant and stingy <laughs> with what was given to you so freely? I need to I need to remind you. That, are, that, 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 that stewards didn't own anything in their possession. They simply managed what belonged to somebody else. And the mark of a good steward was understanding that the things in their possession didn't belong to them. They belonged to the one who put them in their hands. And listen, this is the point. When we realize that, and I'm done. I'm done. Y'all come on up here. I'm done. Listen, when we realize this, we understand that as good stewards, we are simply outlets that dispense God's grace to the world and in the church. But it's, watch this, it's not just a matter of doing good works. It's a matter of doing good works with the right heart. That's motivated by love. It's about to say, well, who cares? What, 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 what does it matter what's in my heart? This is why. Because the truth is, you can do the right thing with the wrong heart. 
And you can do the wrong thing with the right heart. And that's and that's why we we treat one another with grace. Because the reality is that you and I, even on our best day, fall short of the glory of God. And so he says, listen, don't, 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 don't be arrogant, don't be selfish. He says, he says, stretch and strain to love one another. Somebody will say, Richard, you just don't, Lord, you just don't understand how hard it is. Lord said, I, I know. But, 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 Lord, it's hard. Jesus says, I know. But that's, that's why, that's why I am empowering you with my grace and my mercy. So he said, don't be stingy, don't be greedy, don't be arrogant, don't be conceited. Stretch, you use that inner energy on yourself to stretch and strain as you minister to others. Why? Because listen, I, I, I'm convinced, I'm convinced that while we all have to stand before the Lord for ourselves, we ain't gonna get there by ourselves. You're gonna need somebody. I mean, ultimately, you understand that the decision is yours to make. But you're gonna need somebody to him. Now listen, the reason the reason I can't stand y'all, y'all sit up here acting like y'all don't know. That the reason you sitting up in here, amen. The reason somebody's sitting on that couch with their legs crossed mm -hmm, right now, watching this live, is because you've gotten everything right. Come on now. And you ain't you've never needed the help and the encouragement of somebody else. Free, free. The reason, the truth is that if some of us make it. We got a whole lot of people to thank. <laughs> because we didn't get there, we didn't get there by ourselves. And so, so we understand sharing, sharing our gift is our obligation and our responsibility because we have received the gift ourselves. That's why we share the gift. We share the gift because God shared his gift with us. Y'all know the passage. Quote, you probably been quoted since you were a kid. But God so loved the world that he what he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believes on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We give because he gave. Amen. And I want to encourage somebody here. Recognize that if you're ever going to be saved, if you're going to be right in a right position and right condition with the Lord, it's going to be because of the gift of God's son. And listen, if you want to, if you want to take in that gift, if you want to enjoy, enjoy that gift, uh, you need to believe in all of your heart that Jesus lived, suffered, and died for you. You need to trust Him with all of your heart. Believe that He is the Son of God. You need to acknowledge the fact that you've got some sin in your life. That, that is to say, yeah, I, I, I may be all right, but the reality is I, I've done some wrong things with the right heart, and I've done some of the right things with the wrong heart, and I just need the Lord to forgive me. I need the Lord to just to, 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 to wipe my slate clean. Be willing to turn away from a life of sin, confess Jesus Christ to be the Son of God. You can be baptized today in water for the permanent deletion of all your passes, the permanent washing away. If you're watching out there and you, you realize that you're a guilty distance from God, you want to put him on in baptism, leave a comment, message us, and we'll get back to you today. You can complete your obedience to him today. If somebody, maybe you just need prayer, go ahead and leave a comment if you haven't completed a card, and we'll pray for you today. We're going to be prayerful that as you, as you go into yet another week, you will put your faith and you will put your hope and your trust in the Lord and that you will allow the love of the Lord flow to flow through you even when other people are hateful or mean towards you. Because the truth is we'll have trouble standing before God in peace when we have not made peace with our brothers and our sisters. So we invite you to that. We trust that God will give you the strength. The Lord will give you the strength to love when it's hard to love and forgive when it's hard to forgive. Father God, we thank you so much for your grace and for your mercy. We 
thank you for this time together in your word, and we pray that it has fallen on good soil. Father, we pray that as we leave this place, we will, we will be determined to love, to love even when it's difficult, to love people who are difficult to love, Father. Help us. We pray, Lord, as we go into this week, that you will help us to have a spirit of cooperation one for another, to encourage one another, to not tear each other down, but to build each other up. Father, we pray that in the areas of our lives where we need improvement, in the areas of our, in our lives where there is sin and uh, where there is separation from you, Father, we pray that you will, by the person, the person of your Holy Spirit that dwells in every child of God, that you will give us the strength to confront those areas of our lives and make the changes that we need to make so that we can see you again one, uh, one day and see you in the glory. Father, we ask, we ask that you shower us with it. Protection, Father, we're living in trouble sometimes. No, no minute is, is promised. No hour is promised. All we have is right now, Father. But we ask that as we go into this week, Father, that you will protect us, that you will go before us, that you will cover us, Father, and that you will you will bless us to see another Lord's day where we promise to worship you in spirit as well as in truth. That is our prayer. That is our desire. In the name of your son Jesus, we pray. Amen.